Hi there. This is Greg Gaughan for Blues Avenue down here at the Barbary, sitting with Satan and Adam. How you guys doing today? Beautiful. Doing Beautiful. just fine, yeah. Happy to be down in Philadelphia. It's the like second time we've been down here in uh, three months. We're down here, what, last July? When was the when was the in July? Uh, back in July. Back in July. Yeah. introduced us to a, to a Philly audience. Uh, happy to do that. Um, well, we you got, got a I understand that you met in New York City on the street. Can you talk about that a little bit? Right, I was, I was the first because I've been playing out on the streets of Marvel uh, seven, eight years by myself. But at first, I played with another group who run around. Uh, and, uh, I eventually got out with myself. And so one day, at the latter end of 65, I said 86, rather. I'm going back way down, 65. 86. He came with all of that, so how that happened. So he can give me what he went through in order to get there. Okay, you said you met in 86. Right. And how long were you playing blues? Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, have you seen all of the 80s? Not all of, not all of the 80s. Solo is uh, alone, yes. Yeah, so really it was around five, six years. Were you playing with other musicians? Before, the yeah. first time I saw, very first time I saw him, he was playing with a guitar player and a drummer. And a and it was back in 83, and I was in uh, grad school at the University, I was playing outside a bank up there one day, and uh, I saw him, he was just strumming, and he wasn't doing all the percussion stuff that he does at that point. And then, you know, a, year, a couple of years went by, and my life changed a bit, and I hit him over here, and in the streets over there somewhere in about 86, and drove by one day, that's when we say fall of 86 is when I drove by. And I saw him, and got on the car, and asked somebody who he was, and the, and the guy said, Oh, him, that's, that's Satan. Everybody knew all of us. So I so, was sitting with him. I've been playing on Street Corners of Harlem for a long time. I got most of my instruments. Instrumation, information. Yeah, inspiration, I want to say. <laughs> It's ridiculous. One back and I see a thousand of them. One back, I'm stuttering. That's wrong. So by myself, I used to walk the streets of Harlem and one of the drunkards and rhinos me because this was my audience. These are my favorite people anyway. And so as long as I got someone to chastise as far as their conduct is concerned, I'm happy. So I'll be around the rhinos when they start because I said, watch that. You know, just have it. So they straight up a little bit. I used to hang out all night long with the guys around the fire cans when it's cold, such as, not, not this cold, but it would be such as like 45 degrees, so I'd be out there playing, and there yeah, they'd just be bad, right? Just with the acoustic guitar, and so it brought about a whole lot of inspiration because when you, I don't care who the audience is, when you get some people that really downright appreciate you, this inspires you to go further in your ventures of evolution. I don't care if you're playing to a white collar situation and tuxedos of water, they don't appreciate you, you really don't feel like being there. This goes with the music. And but before this I played with many great guys, right. if you will, Marvin Gay King, Curtis, Etta James, Lil Anthony and the Imperials, Global Ten Man Watch, Joe D and the Starlighters, and you got some others. On your own too. We, got those. <laughs> <laughs> we do one of the songs, right? Oh, she was pretty well, I was saying it wasn't nothing. But however, we are we are growing as a group, as a little group. <laughs> and it's nice because there's not so many of us, it's only two. And we can fit in a little place and sell so it's a lot. There's a drummer here, right? Because we know. I definitely don't have to look for the drummer. <laughs> right. A guy what I used to play with, his name was Frank Royals. He's now deceased. He made a statement, I don't mean to be, but this was his word, so I'll repeat it. He said, all drummers are crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Come to find out. We met Chris. The beat, no, the beat brought yeah. us to their head or something. Remember we were over in Switzerland last summer. We were playing in Basel. And right. There was, was a guy who was Louis. Louis, Louis one of the bartenders. He turned from Long Island, right? But he's in Basel, Switzerland. And so one night he just got really crazy. And, and either he jumped up or we invited him. But he came up on stage with a, a metal bucket. And, and beat a hole in the bucket. They put a mic in front of it. The rhythm was ter terrific. But the he was crazy. The twisted. I'm going backwards and forward at the same time. The twisted part was ever did. <laughs> and when we flew back to Switzerland, guess who was on the plane coming over here? He was on here? the plane with his Swiss wife and his kids. Uh, so we've been traveling, you know, we, we, for four years, but we didn't really go anywhere 
It's just on the streets. We didn't even play an indoor game. That's right. Things are set for. We are. We are. We are our rehearsal hall. Where we have a reserved spot. That's something most of the musicians in Harlem, uh, not Harlem, in New York City. When you say New York City, my mind runs straight to Harlem. Okay. So most of the musicians don't have a spot, but they they have a spot where they would like to play and where they would like to be. But it's depending on the police now around where we are in Harlem, where I am, he's further up. And what's the name of your area? Inwood. The police around the 28th precinct area, that's the area of 125th Street between. In that particular sector, it's like from Fifth Avenue over to Amsterdam Avenue, say, and down to 116th Street. The 28th precinct, all of them know me because I play for one of the offices of promotion there in the precinct. Usually when a musician goes to the precinct, he or she is being booked. I played over there, so it all people at the telephone company know us. We kept the building when they moved over to one place from where they were. And when they came back, we kept the building, and not so repeated and all of this. So they gave us the front and close spot. There's a lot of vendors out there, but they can't even put up anything there because we're in the front window. And this comes from a long time being there, exercising respect, no violence, good manners and a pleasurable behavioral pattern. And they gave us a spot, and so we have a reserve spot. This is unlike any musician. If he, if he think, if he... Listen, I gotta let some of these people return the crowd up.